Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. We have managed to get four of us online. This is a sort of video live extension of the Acquia podcast, Drupal Technology Community and Business. I was chatting with Lee Rollins, and Lee wrote a blog post called Drupal 8 Won't Kill Your Kittens. Lee invited along Tim Plunkett and Daniel Vena. So, yup, Stender, said something that's probably on a lot of people's minds. Can you explain why a part of the current Drupal dev uh, community doesn't seem to appreciate or maybe understand the advantages of Drupal 8 that appear to be obvious to you? Why do some people think it will kill kittens? So, so one big yeah. reason why, why people are complaining uh, these days is uh, object, ob uh, object oriented code. So this is Tuple has always been this this old procedural simple system, and nowadays with Tuple 8, everything got rewritten. So they don't know any particular code anymore, and uh, they have to re relearn a, a, at least a, le a lot of code. But from the concepts, uh, some small uh, not everything changed. So um, I think it's just this this big big amount of uh, folders you have now to play and the big amount of more files uh, which is kind of it's like I don't know what's a good comparison uh, yeah it's just the first the first view on to play is just uh, I don't know like like a total new world so I, I, I can relate good relate to those concerns having gone through the same thing between Drupal 6 and 7 and people probably say there wasn't that big a shift between 6 and 7 but I felt that there was and um, so I can completely understand people would feel frightened or would feel uneasy about you know they've got all these Drupal 7 skills and when they look at Drupal 8 that they feel that they might not be relevant anymore but the core underlying concepts are still there. It's just the back end stuff so it's really module developers that are going to experience the changes um, but I think it's well worth learning because the things that they do learn will bring their PHP skills and generally their programming skills up to um, kind of modern standards. Um, we've got, uh, I mean, Drupal was seven was built to run on older versions of PHP, so 5.2, and, and so in particular there were concepts that we couldn't use. Uh, namespaces this is one such concept uh, in Drupal seven, but now that Drupal eight has a higher PHP requirement. Um, then we can use those, and it kind of brings Drupal up to um, up to date with like what a lot of the modern PHP world is doing. So yeah, I think it's, the, it's a, sorry. Yeah, it's a worthwhile investment. Is what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, the thing for me is that everyone, or a lot of what I've heard is, oh, you know, we're adding Symphony, we're adding this and that, and that's making it uh, more complicated. But it's funny because. This, a lot of the Symphony stuff is actually the easier part for me because their documentation is so good and there's other examples. A lot of the hard and confusing and uh, parts are just us modernizing to, to 5.3 and a lot of the concepts like dependency injection and uh, a dependency injection container and all that is what everyone else is doing and we're just, it's just a little bit of growing pains um, and it's not you know, symphony to blame or anything. It's it's us finally getting pulled, kicking and screaming into, into modern object-oriented programming. Yeah, I mean, and I don't have a background in computer science. I, you know, I took a few electives at, at uni, but I don't have a trained computer science background, but I've, I've kind of got my training from the Drupal community. So we have experts in the community in most of the topics that... Um, you know that we've encountered, and so and those people are approachable. You know, so I mean, I saw a patch a week or so ago about something in, involving a new feature of PHP 5.4 called traits, and we don't we can't use them in Drupal because um, we support 5.3 and that's not available. 
but I'd never heard of it, right? I didn't know what it did. So, you know, I went off and read some code and read a patch, basically. And after reading the patch, I think it was from Paris, the Dark Horse, I knew what traits were. Um, yeah, but if I didn't fully understand after the first read, I could have gone on to IRC and said, hey, what's the story? And I'm sure I would have been inundated with replies. I mean, we're not um, an exclusive, we're not a, you know, um, oh, you don't know that go away type community. We're, we're very embracing. And um, I mean, the, the other guys on this, Tim and, and Daniel, I mean, they've helped me immensely with stuff where I've kind of not understood what was going on. And they're always too happy to help. And, and that's in general, anyone in the group community is the same. Mm. So yeah, you're not on your own. There's always something new to learn, and that you know the technology is always moving forward. So I agree that it, part of this is just a consequence uh, of of that. And actually, my PHP friends uh, tend to slap me on 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 the wrist when I say, "Oh yeah, because you know we're we're doing the the modern you know we're we're now relevant in the PHP world because actually PHP 5.3 is uh, two versions behind the latest stable release, which is 5.5." You know, and they're already using uh, traits all the time and, and getting all kinds of excited about other things. Uh, for example, PHP 5.4 is a lot faster than 5.3. So um, I think we should try and actually follow, uh, you know, stay a lot closer to head with, in PHP if we possibly can, too. Um, yeah, I mean, 5.3 is nearly end of life, isn't it? Uh, isn't it's going, it's, it's already, end of life in June, I think. Yeah. It already was end of life. Um, I mean, the thing, the problem is that Drupal still addresses the lowest common denominator of shared hosting, and we can't switch to 5.4. Yeah, I was, I was looking um, on the, uh, the, the online statistics recently, and 80% uh, of websites run PHP right now, and of those, something like 76% run PHP 5.3. So we're, we're in great company. There's, not, you know, there's yeah. no question about that. This question seems fundamental to what we're talking about today. I heard the term tribal skills for the first time just maybe last week or the week before, and, you know, it turns out that if you are a super hotshot Drupal 7 developer and you've bootstrapped yourself into that world, um, you might not be able to find work outside of doing Drupal 7 work because it's so idiosyncratic and because we were so uh, isolated uh, in our coding styles in making everything ourselves f for so long, and... Um, What's really exciting to see n now is that um, moving Drupal to a to a more up-to-date uh, coding standard allows us to do things like use Composer so that Drupal components can get installed and used outside of Drupal, right? And you know now we can actually influence other projects and and some of the crazy innovative ideas that we have um, are working. You know, we'll be working on code that other people can really can really deal with, and um, I think it also makes our job as a project easier because, um, you know, because we can import, import compo we can import Twig, we can import components from Symfony, so, you know, we've kind of open sourced our project, uh, and, and, and we've got more eyes on our project, so, so it's helping keep it more secure and, and, you know, maintain it better. What does Angie call that? Um, proudly made elsewhere, right? Proudly found elsewhere. Proudly found elsewhere. So, so I, I just love the fact that that we can, you know, we can interact with more of our our peers inside and outside of Drupal now too, thanks to all of this. Okay, um, Larry Garfield. Uh, Larry Garfield says it's proudly invented elsewhere. It's Pi. So uh, we stand corrected, I guess. Well, the, the issue tag on Drupal.org is PFE. Proudly, proudly uh -oh. found. <laughs> Take that. Take that, Krell. <laughs> the first thing you said about uh, a Drupal 7, a highly competent Drupal 7 developer's skills being possibly useless elsewhere, um, I, you know, during the long part of Contrib, like the, I guess, between Chicago and Denver, as far as Drupal cons are counting, um, I was kind of worried about that kind of thing, especially with Drupal 7. Um, and the only reason I kind of felt you know, safe again was when I started diving into views and C tools stuff, and I didn't really think about why. But now, on reflecting, it is because views is all. Uh, I mean, the the backbone of views is all object oriented code, and C tools, while not necessarily all OO, um, is at least trying out new paradigms, um, which was largely adopted for the Drupal eight plugin stuff. And yeah, Drupal uh, 
vanilla core Drupal 7 is really, really obsolete um, in you know, the skills that you learn from using that code. It's just no one writes code like that anymore. Kind of, I found refuge in the, in the views and Ctool stuff, and that's what ended up you know, bringing me into the core world because of the of using core initiative. Oh, okay. So it's your gateway drug, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the reason I decided that it was still worth dedicating time to, and what uh-huh. we weren't becoming irrelevant. Um, this is a great question for you guys, though, uh, and you get a minute each on it if you want. How do core generalists get to give feedback on the big picture of Drupal 8 architectural decisions as opposed to battling it out at the patch level day to day? That's what DrupalCon's for. <laughs> okay. I mean, we have, we have these big roundtable discussions, sometimes at Badcamp, sometimes at DrupalCon, where we do kind of step back and, and re, regroup um, because most of it is done, you know, one by one in issues. And if, if it can be, we split it into a meta issue and have a big discussion. But most of the real kind of retrospective stuff happens in person because it has to. Okay. I, I think what really helped in Drupal 8 was the concept of initiatives. So at least each initiative has its own big picture in mind. Lee, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm kind of lower level than that, to be honest. Um, you know, like, I, the stuff that I maintain in core, they're modules in core, and they are kind of the use case for these things, or the proof of concept. I mean, I think someone was saying earlier that, bizarrely, aggregator forum and book module are the most modern models, modules in core, and they were always the, you know, the, the, the most neglected. And I think those, they, there is a place for these modules insofar as they are our real-world test case for the new APIs. And so, yeah, I'm kind of, I guess... A consumer on that level, um, but yeah, um, that's I'm happy with that. Rob Wolleb asks, uh, says one fear I hear is that D8 will be really code heavy. Uh, they think that writing custom D8 code for a project will require many more lines of code than D7 equivalent. How would you respond to that? Uh, if you count white space, you're right. If you don't, <laughs> then you're wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, because we're using methods and not massive monolithic functions, there's a lot more space in your files. Um, but the actual functional lines of code are equivalent or less, and they're better and more self-documenting, and that's just wrong, basically. Yeah. So anyone yeah, who's saying that it, it, yeah, isn't writing code. Yeah, another point is that these days with CMI and uh, the new routing system, everything or a lot of things are basically configured in YAML files, so instead of writing code, you just have to adapt a single line in a, uh, in a YAML file, and that's it. It's, uh, yeah, well, it's a question whether this counts as code, but I think it's not code, though. But on, on the same respect, if you do find stuff where there is duplication, because we have object inheritance now, we can create base classes that encapsulate a lot of that. So if you do find places, I mean, and we have had... Um, you know, recently we've had controller base, um, form base, plugin base, and these kind of contain common things that you know we were seeing boilerplate, and um, that allowed us to trim all that down. And um, I mean, there's some patches for um, the config entity stuff to reduce the amount of uh, boilerplate that you need for those. And you know, we're not saying it's perfect, but if there is places that you think you can see some opportunity for optimization, you know. Yeah, we've Probably been kind of loosely, loosely following, um, I, I guess IRC Maxwell came up with it, but the rule of three, where you write something once, and then if you need it again, you might just copy-paste it. But if you need it a third time, then you refactor. And yeah. people come in and see, look at some code and say, oh, this is nuts, but it's the only the first time we've had to do it. So oh. if we refactor too early, it's going to be crap, and we're going to have to do it again. But, yeah. um, and so we're kind of maturing to that point now. Right, and I mean, we every time we we keep regrouping and writing new base classes. So like the plugins, um, and as you said, everything Lee just said basically. And it now is the time that we can sort of draw conclusions about how we're using things and what makes sense to make it uh, like a little bit more accessible um, when writing the code, and what stuff is just a complete one-off. That's um, a so. This really... is the time to help with that. Oh, that's a really perfect point. Actually, do you know, um, so IRC Max, so that's Anthony Ferrara. Do you know if he's, right. if, if he's posted anywhere about that? Maybe we could... He, just did, a session, he did a session at Prague um, oh. on, I don't even know what the title of it was, but it was excellent, and he mentions that kind of stuff. By the same regard, 
Um, I think there's a change notice that I wrote for we added an entity view um, routing functionality so that if you needed to output the view of a node or of a entity, any entity in a particular view mode, um, there's a the one liner you can put in your routing file to do that. And we need a, um, a render controller or a render handler for that entity type, but because we have object inheritance, most of those just um, can inherit from the base class unless they have something fancy where they add, like you can see node has its own title. Um, you know, so I think the change notice for that is the telling difference between the lines of code required. For Drupal 8, you need a YAML file with six lines in it. For Drupal 7, the amount of code that goes into the node view page, which is, you know, slash node slash one, I think there was seven, uh, there was at least seven functions required to do that. Um, mm. And the change notice says what you have to do in Drupal 7, and it's a chunk of text about this one, and then, yeah, Drupal 8 is like this. And yeah, that, that kind of highlights that what object inheritance, inheritance gives us in terms of manageability. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk with me today, tonight, this morning, this afternoon. Uh, it's been really, really informative. I am hoping that a lot of people will come and watch us on YouTube in the next weeks. Thank you, Daniel Vena, Lee Rollins, Tim Plunkett. Thank you so, so very much for for taking the time to talk with me, and I will see you sometime soon, I hope. Thanks. Good night, guys. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.